Sunday, August 9th, day I believe 82. So we're heading into Syed Valley. Uh, I believe we'll hike around 20, 21 miles today. Uh, Syed Valley's, I believe, the last town in California, so that's kind of cool. Um, apparently, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a river right over there. And apparently, at times, some people cross that river as a shortcut into Syed Valley, because if you don't cross the river, then you have, like, to, like, walk two and a half miles down it that way to a bridge, and then just walk two and a half miles back. So, some people try and, I guess they see it as cut off some pointless miles and just enter the city quicker. However, apparently, it's also, I guess, private property. I mean, right here, it's hard to tell if it's private property on this side. But apparently, yeah, on the other side, I can see houses and stuff, so it's very, I'd say in my mind, very clearly private property. But apparently, some hikers try and cross it anyway, and apparently that's really irritating some of the landowners. So yeah, I guess the moral of that story is, you're cho you have chosen to hike a scenic trail, so you should hike the scenic trail. Stay on it for all of the miles, even if you think it's pointless. And don't risk irritating other people. Respect their property and hike the trail that you intended to hike. Uh, earlier this morning we left Syed Valley, so I believe that's the last town we'll encounter in California. Uh, we had like a 4,000 foot climb or so right outside of the city, so that wasn't too bad. It wasn't terribly enjoyable, but at least we did it in the morning, so I think we beat most of the heat. Uh, we probably hiked about 23 miles today. Uh, Syed Valley is also where the Pancake Challenge is at. Uh, unfortunately, though, the person didn't really have sufficient batter for us to do that, so we didn't get to try that. I was debating on and off the whole trip whether or not I should try doing that or not, and I had kind of finally landed on that I should at least give it a try, and then they didn't really have the batter for it, so, yep, that was a fail. But the food we got there was still pretty good. So here we are at camp. We left um, Syed Valley earlier this morning, which is the last town stop in California. So right now, I think we're 12 miles from the Oregon border. We were only gonna hike 20 miles today because we weren't sure if we were gonna leave the town as early as we thought, or <laughs> we, sometimes we plan to leave early and then we don't leave as early as we planned and then we have to do shorter days. So we just decided to plan on a 20 in case we didn't get out early in the morning. But we did a pretty good job getting out early, so after going 20 miles, we decided to do a few more. There wasn't any wild water sources if we kept going, so we did have to do a bit of a water carry for the last few miles. But it was only three miles, and it wasn't super uphill or anything, so it wasn't too bad. Um, so we went about 22, 23 miles today, somewhere in there. Tomorrow we think we're going to try to do 29 and then we'll meet up with the vehicles at a PC, the first PCT shelter that we would have encountered on this trail, which also apparently has a road going to it. And then from there we're going to take a couple days off and see the Redwoods. We've got cell service and camp, which is pretty rare and a pretty good view over there. I guess you can't really see it, but I can see out into the range, uh, mountain range. And there was more smoke today. Um, and it looks like it's coming from a couple different directions, so I'm not really sure where the fires are uh, or how bad the smoke's going to continue being, but it's definitely increased since yesterday. Uh, so the plan today is to hike 28, almost 29 miles to a PCT shelter where we'll also meet our support vehicles. Uh, then I'll probably take the next day or two off to go see the Redwoods. That sounds like, I mean, if you're in California, especially if you're in California near the Redwoods, it just seems like you should take the time to probably go see them. So that's what we'll be doing for the next few days. Um, uh, if you don't count our trip to see the Redwoods, that means today will be the last day we'll be in California. We're going to Cross the California Oregon border in probably about 12 and a half miles here, which that's pretty exciting. Really big milestone and kind of nice to 
get to see a different state. California's been nice enough, but yeah, after 84 days, I think we're kind of ready to experience a different state. However, I don't know. As much as it is great and exciting to be to Oregon, I don't know, I guess I can't help but feel that we're kind of like rushing to the end of our trip, I guess. I mean, on the one hand, we do need to, you know, keep up a reasonable pace. Otherwise, the weather in Washington is going to be abysmal. But on the other hand, I don't know, it seems like this California-Oregon border crossing, more than any of the other milestones, is kind of like the biggest wake-up call is that our trip is coming to an end. And I mean, I guess, yeah, we always knew the trip wouldn't last forever, but yeah, I guess it just still felt like we're kind of rushing towards the end of the trip. When, yeah, in all reality, I'm not sure if we really want the trip to end. Yeah, so I guess this California-Oregon border crossing is is kind of bittersweet. It's awesome that I've made it this, this far and that it seems really likely that we'll be able to go the whole way. And seeing other states sounds great, but it is also just, yeah, a strong reminder that uh, we're probably more than halfway done with our trip and it seems like the end is just right around the corner and then we'll have to go back to real life and get jobs and do all that again. We're probably less than a mile from the Oregon border, and we found this cabin. Thought we'd take the time to go check it out. There goes a outbuilding out there. Some pile of something over there. So Donmore Cabin, 1935. So the stories tell us an Indian killed the Frenchman settler Donmore and the Portuguese miner Sylvie near here during the Humbug War in the summer of 1855. Farther back to Mexico than to Canada. And a sign. And then there's a trail log here. This is the Oregon California logbook. And when we signed it, we didn't notice it. We thought we were the first people today, but now that we're looking more closely, we see that there's a couple others. The very first people wrote that they got here at 426 AM. They either start very early or were very determined to get here. Then the next guy said 8.30 AM. And then the other guy was a uh, self-founder who I think we passed. 
So we're just past the Oregon border where somebody has carved that tree into like a bench and stump into like a seat or a throne. And I guess sometimes they'll be trolling just here and they'll give you like a shot of alcohol or something. So you sit in the throne and drink your alcohol and get your picture taken or a video or something. Uh, we decided what we're gonna do is we're each going to look in our food bags and try and come up with pretty much the nastiest concoction we can think of within reason and then the other person will have to eat it. So that's our plan. Okay, so part of the issue is I didn't want to open anything that, you know, I didn't want to eat right away. So I was somewhat limited on my selection, but I think I've decided on a base of animal cracker with some peanut butter, which sounds normal enough, but then we're going to mix in some sweet and spicy tuna and add in these salt and vinegar chips as a garnish. So I'm hoping the tuna and peanut butter will be an odd enough combination and then hopefully the salt and vinegar chips will add some sort of, I don't know, strange texture or maybe make it, I don't know. I'm hoping it'll be odd and peculiar and she won't like it. Camera does not want to focus at all. Oh, there we go. But there it is. There's some peanut butter, tuna, the garnish, and the animal cracker. So let's bring it over to Jerrica on her seat and we'll see what she thinks. Enjoy. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> the peanut and tuna are definitely very strong. Hmm. And the chip kind of wanted to cut the top of my mouth. Okay, so even after like 1,600 miles, it's still not a win? It's just acceptable? No, I wouldn't <laughs> make this to eat for my own lunch, but it wasn't so bad. All right, then. All right, I'm going to prepare Dakota his gross food thing that we decided to do. I decided to do a part of a tuna, uh, I mean part of a tortilla with some seaweed on it, uh, a Vienna sausage and some Fanta flavored jello. This is just basically everything I plan to eat for lunch combined into one bite. Here's the gross bite thing I made for Dakota. Picking it up is going to be really interesting, but let's see if I can, and then bring it over to him on the chair. Oh, not too bad. This jello seemed really slippery and runny, but actually it stayed on just fine when I picked it up. Mine might be a few bites. Yeah. It's not a whole Venus sausage though, so you might be able to get it in. <laughs> Messy, huh? Hmm. So, the jello and seaweed is not a good combination. The Vienna sausage and the seaweed though is actually pretty good. So without the jello, this might actually be worth doing. Oh. Yeah, not bad. Tuesday, August 11th, day 84. And here we are at our first water source in Oregon. I would say it's a pretty good water source, probably five out of five. Easy to collect, nice and cold, comes out clear and doesn't have a taste. Yep, good water source. And an adequate view at the water source too, so yep, probably five out of five. 